Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. US President Joe Biden has ordered intelligence officials to redouble efforts to investigate the origins of COVID-19. We know America will never be fully safe until the pandemic that's raging globally is under control. Mr. Biden made it clear that the CIA and other intelligence agencies had not yet reached a consensus on whether the virus was the result of a lab accident or emerged from human contact with an infected animal. The president asked the groups to report back to him within 90 days. <laughs> The Chinese Foreign Ministry has warned against politicizing origin tracing and that the U.S. are being disrespectful to science, irresponsible to people's lives and counterproductive to the concerted efforts to fight the virus. Hong Kong has passed a controversial electoral reform law aimed at keeping people that China deems unpatriotic from positions of political power. The reform will allow a pro-China panel to vet and elect candidates, reducing democratic representation. Critics warn it is designed to remove all opposition from the city's parliament, allowing Beijing to tighten its control over Hong Kong. It is the latest measure designed to crack down on dissent in the territory. The trial of an Australian Chinese writer charged with espionage by China has begun in a closed-door court in Beijing. Yang Hung-jun, an Australian citizen, has been detained for over two years after his arrest at an airport in 2019. Beijing has revealed next to no details about the charges he faces, leading Australia to contend he is suffering an arbitrary detention. Uh, nevertheless, regardless of what happens today, we will continue to advocate strongly on behalf of Dr Young for his interests and his rights. Thank Australian diplomats were turned away from entering his courtroom. If convicted, Yang faces a jail term of 10 years or more on charges of endangering national security. The Morrison government has come under attack over failed quarantine arrangements and the sluggish pace of Australia's vaccine rollout as Victoria enters a seven-day circuit breaker lockdown. There are no certainties, there are no guarantees in a global pandemic and against a virus. Nearly 7 million people in the state of Victoria will have to stay at home for a week in a bid to contain the new cluster of cases. Contact tracers have identified more than 10,000 primary and secondary contacts who would need to quarantine, test and self-isolate, adding that number will continue to grow and change. State authorities say the federal government's vaccination program has failed to meet targets and it has left the nation vulnerable to outbreaks. Tens of thousands of people have fled the Congolese city of Goma after officials ordered the evacuation of parts of the city due to the risk of further eruptions from Mount Nirangongo. The United Nations said that Nirangongo, the most active volcano in the African continent, had roared back to life on Saturday, leaving about 20,000 people homeless and at least 32 people dead. The lava stopped just 300 metres short of Goma Airport, the main hub for aid operations in the east of Congo. The city has since been shaken by more than 200 small and medium earthquakes. French President Emmanuel Macron has said France recognised its responsibility in the 1994 Rwandan genocide and has asked for forgiveness for his country's role. Nous faire le don alors de nous pardonner. It comes while Macron is on a tour of Rwanda, months after the release of an official French report, which said the then government bore a serious and overwhelming responsibility for not foreseeing the killings. During the genocide, between April and July of 1994, some 800,000 people were slaughtered, mainly from the ethnic Tutsi minority, but also moderate Hutus. Mali's coup leaders have released interim president Bar Dor and prime minister Mokhtar Ouane. The two men had been held at a military camp since Monday. Meanwhile, the U.S. State Department has said it will halt its security assistance to Mali following the latest political developments. It further stated that a democratic civilian-led government presented the best opportunity to achieve security and prosperity in Mali and the wider Sahel region. And finally, a huge supermoon has lit up the port of Arginegin in the south of Gran Canaria in Spain. It is the closest full moon of the Earth of the year, giving it its title of supermoon and making it look bigger and brighter. Moons were often given their names by Native American tribes and based on events in nature. May's moon is named the Flower Moon after the abundant flowers that bloom across North America in May. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.